All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'll do the quick introduction for everybody that's watching, uh, and then we'll, we'll say hello to everybody. So if you're watching this on the replay on this channel, today we're going to make a yikama and mango salad with cilantro and lime. All the ingredients are down below in the description. We normally do these live, so if you are watching this as a recording, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also hit on the notification bells because we do go live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at five o'clock mountain time. So hopefully you can catch us on the next one. And for everybody that's watching right now, welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got Kelsey here. Hopefully, I, wonder, I don't know if anybody's following along, but hello, Kelsey. And we've got a, who else is here? Nadia's here, hello, Nadia, welcome, welcome. Christine is here, and uh, Jason's tuning in. There we go, and Nadia feels more relaxed after the music. Hopefully, I turned it down a little bit this week, so hopefully it was a little, not as piercing on your ears and maybe a little bit more relaxing. There we go. Hopefully, everybody had a good weekend. Let's get into this. So we'll describe this, this salad we're going to do tonight. Really simple one, uh, but I'm gonna guess that most people probably haven't heard of Yakama before. I first had yakama probably like back when I worked in the hotel. I, I, I didn't even know what the heck it was. So um, let's get started. This is a great summer salad. Everybody was asking for, for salads and this is, this is a good one. We're gonna, we're gonna do this one. We'll do the salad up and I do have a little bit of salmon that I'm gonna cook off. So we'll do that at the end so you can see how we do and then we'll plate up everything and we'll, we'll taste it as we go. So yakama. If you've ever been in a supermarket and seen this big giant bulby root, it's, a, it's basically a root vegetable and it's popular in Mexico. And uh, it, it's kind of like, it's white inside. So it's kind of like, a, I guess the best kind of texture to describe it, it's quite hard. And uh, it's kind of like a mixture between, I guess the best thing that I kind of found the description for was like between a potato and a pear. So you can eat it, you eat it raw. And uh, it's a great, in salads, it's good. Um, and it's also really good, like if you're gonna cut it up as well for if you're doing like a veggie tray, it's kind of a neat vegetable to add to that as well. So yakama, take, it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not common, but you can usually find it in most grocery stores. So if you want, try this and give this a try. I don't know if anybody's um, following along, but uh, if you are, uh, if you have questions about this, let me, uh, let me know. And, uh, and Christine, no. So Christine only has salmon in Mexico. No, this is this is uh, wild salmon, but uh, it was frozen previously from from Canada. <laughs> and hey, Stormer, welcome, welcome back. We'll get started. So ingredients for this one, obviously yakama. We're gonna use. I'm gonna use about half of this. It's fairly large, so it's only with only two people gonna be eating. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it in half. We'll use half. We'll save the rest for something else. Um, mango. We want to use a fresh, fresh mango for this if you can. And if you've ever wondered when you, you know, when you buy a, when you buy mangoes and they are green and really like almost rock hard, that's what we want for this recipe. Ideally, the green ones, because the way we're going to be cutting them up and juuling them up, it goes really nice with the green kind of tart of the hard, harder mango. So don't be afraid to use the mango a little bit more on the harder side. If you have a a mango that's more ripe, you can use it. It's just going to be a bit more pulpy when you chop it up. Um, if you did have frozen, like, you know, you get those chunks of frozen mango, you could also use that as well if you don't have fresh. But ideally, like the hard green mango. We've got a red onion we're going to put in there. This is a, this is a, li this is a little, little red onion. So perfect, perfect size. If it was a big, like one of the bigger sized, bigger size one, maybe just half would be good. A couple of limes. This is a really simple recipe. A couple of limes. And we're gonna put in there as well. We're gonna chop up some cilantro. So we've got the fresh, some fresh cilantro here. And a touch of honey in there. And uh, we, the recipe does call for, for, chili, for chili flakes. Uh, so they're not super, super spicy, but they have a little bit of bite. You can omit those. If you don't want, if you don't want anything spicy, you can, you can omit these. Or if you had some fresh you know, Thai chilies or something like that, you could definitely put some fresh jalapeno, Thai chilies, some type of pepper. Into, into their fresh as well, if you wanted to. Um, but I kept it kind of with stuff that hopefully everybody can find pretty well in the, uh, in the grocery store. And uh, a couple more people joining, thanks. Uh, we've got Dean here, hello. And Diane, welcome, welcome. So if you have any questions, we'll get started. If you have any questions as we go, uh, 
ask away. And uh, the uh, for this for the salmon, I'm going to be cooking off. I've got that. This if people are following along, I've got the salmon uh, pre not not cooking yet. The oven's preheated to three three fifty, and uh, I've got the cast iron pan just preheating the oven. So a little tip there: if you have a cast iron pan that you're going to use for sautéing, and you're heating up the oven anyways because you're going to be putting in the oven, put the put the pan in the oven. It'll preheat it. It'll make things go a lot quicker. When we're trying to heat up. And meant to be RVing. Welcome. I think this is your, well, I think it might be your first time, but if it, welcome or welcome back. So we'll get started. There we go. So we're just going to use half, half of this. You're going to need a pretty, it's, it's a pretty heavy vegetable. So you do need a fairly large knife to get through it because it does, like I said, has the, has the texture of a, a pear or a potato. So we're going to use half. We'll wrap the rest up for, for the next time. But really easy. You want to peel it, and it, it, I mean, it's a, it's an easy vegetable to work with. Peel off the outside. You've, if anybody's been to a resort in Mexico, like an all-inclusive resort in Mexico, it um, you've probably had this. A lot of times they're in like a, on the veggie in the veggie tray in sticks. Oh, we've got. Uh, Oh, thanks, Lucia. Voted. So I've got a poll going. That's what Lucia is uh, asking here. I've got a poll going on my, if you go to my, web, uh, not my website, but onto the YouTube and uh, the community tab there, there's a section for a poll and I'm going to be doing a breakfast and it's either going to be pancakes or waffles and uh, you can vote. If you head over there after this stream, head over there and vote for what you would like to see on uh, our breakfast live stream. Probably gonna be doing it for Father's Day, but we'll see, we'll see what the votes come through. I like waffles, Lucia likes waffles. So maybe we'll cook waffles, maybe we'll cook pancakes, it's up to you. So once that's that's peeled, that's, that's kind of it. What we're gonna wanna do for this recipe is cut them all into, I guess like the best way to describe it, like ju julienne or match, like matchstick sized. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, if you want to do it by hand, we can definitely do it by hand. Um, but I'll show you one way first by hand. Uh, so we're cutting it. Uh, let's just see if we can show the like matchstick size, right? Uh, so when you cut that up, there's a bit seems to be a bit more. You want it all kind of the same size, roughly, for this salad. So we want to cut it into, into like sticks, basically little sticks. So there's that. That's the way to uh, to do the match sticks. Ideally, you want to kind of trim it down and have it the same size. But if you want to save some time, and you have the right tools, is you can use a man a mandolin with a section to do the uh, like the match stick julienne cut, and this will make it go that much faster. So it's just a matter of going up and down. And you'll see here, you have to be careful so you don't cut your fingers off, obviously. But as we go through, it's gonna save us a ton of time. And there is a guard for when you get to the end. I always find it the guard sometimes makes it makes it worse. That's why I kind of just do it carefully by hand. But it, if it gets stuck, don't don't uh, don't force it because you don't want to cut your fingers off your little slices. So that comes out a lot faster. Well, so we'll, instead of chopping for ten minutes, it takes. It just takes a minute. But what you want to do with the last with the last bit, it's not a bad idea because you're because of fingers is just to finish it by finish it by hand, and then you're not wasting any of the uh, vegetable. So as you can see, that half gives you quite quite a bit of uh, stuff for the salad here. All right. 
Let's get the onion in there. And uh, we'll see. So, oh, Cheryl Edwards, uh, welcome. Welcome to the channel. And it is RV, Ar meant to be Arvine's first time. Everybody, all my friends, meant, meant to be RV, Arvine. Everybody, everybody here has all been talking about renting RVs for the summer and doing RV trips. <laughs> and I think the pancakes... Christine, we'll just do, I like just the regular. I'll do, I, although I do have some blueberries. I do have some blueberries in the, in the freezer. Could maybe look at that, but it might be, it might be waffles. You never know. Onion, red onion here. You could use a white onion. It's nicer, it, it's nicer to use the sweet, like the sweeter red onion. And also for the color, it's nice to have the red onion. So we'll just peel that. And we're gonna julienne this as well. Just a bit of the edge here, there we go. So peeled. And, uh, oh, and no, not yet, don't have a waffle maker yet. This is almost, I guess, a, an excuse to get to maybe get a waffle maker, because I like waffles, but we'll see what the boat says. We'll have to see. Uh, onion as well, julienne. So cut in half, cut the ends off, peeled, cut in half, and then just sliced into little sticks. And when that's done, the other side. Like so. So when that, oh, when it gets all stirred together, you can see a second just a little it'll all break apart into the individual pieces so into the bowl and I have never heard of a cha a cha chaffle chaffle never heard of that never heard of that it's like a mixture a mixture of a pancake and a waffle maybe I don't know there we go this will all get mixed in at the end Perfect. Now, mango, same thing. Obviously, when the, the harder we want to peel this, and we can use the uh, use the same same peeler, and you can see it's like green. You know, it's green. We want that ideally with the mango. So we're peeling the skin off, and we're going to cut this the same the same way as the uh, yukama. I've never heard of a cha chaffle. That's the first time I've ever, ever heard of that. Hold on here, my, I think I bought a, did I buy a left-handed peeler, it seems. <laughs> there we go. Now this is this salad you could make ahead of time for sure you could make it in the morning we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes as it's uh, as it, when we cook the salmon so as you get the mango it's kind of, might be kind of hard to explain but if you see it it's it's like an old you know it's more of a egg shape I guess we want to cut the sides from the egg part because in the middle there's like a big pit and you'll see it at the end here as we do the uh, the julienne So, same way, careful. And if you get it stuck, you don't want to, uh, it's gonna get quite quite hard, because that's where the pit, that's where the pit starts. So, you're just gonna go to the other side. And it doesn't take a lot of force, really, for this. It, um, let the blade really does the work for itself, and you'll, You'll feel it when it hits the hits the pit. And you can kind of see it right there. So we just want to kind of work around that. Perfect. And then for the end the end parts, same 
same way. What we can do is you can sometimes get a little bit off with your blade, but a lot of times it's the, the pits already in there, so you, you might, no, nah, we're not gonna get much off that. It's, it's quite difficult when it's a, such a, um, such a, like a green mango, so got the most out of it we could. Just rinse that off. That's actually the first time I've used them, this mandolin, so it's quite sharp. All right. And sorry, I'm missing your questions here. They're not rolling. They're not rolling up there. And um, do we compost? Yes. So they normally, Nadia, they normally here we do have separate. Uh, separate uh, containers for the stuff, but they haven't been, because of the, the whole situation, uh, they haven't been doing any of the sorting and stuff at the plants. So, so no, they just go into the, into the garbage right now. But, and uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I think, are you nervous? If you're nervous watching the mandolin, it's, if Dean's watching, it's not as bad as watching Dean peel and slice, peel and slice a, a pineapple. <laughs> and uh, no, no, we've, we've done, Christine, we've done pretty, pretty good, pretty good so far. Um, no, no cuts, Thanks. knock on, knock on wood. Um, but you have to, yes, you have to be very careful with the mandolin, they're very sharp. So don't be, uh, yeah. Here, let's see. So we've got that mixed in, the mango, the mango and the yakima and the onions. So let's get the rest of the ingredients in here so the salad can, car can start to, to kind of soak in all the flavors and the, the, the juices and stuff. Cilantro, just a rough chop on this. If you don't like cilantro, you could omit this could use fresh, a little bit of fresh parsley if you had it, but the cilantro gives it the nice, nice flavor. So when this is all done, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a sweet and crunchy with the lime sour salad. It's actually quite, uh, quite good. So with the limes first, we'll get the, uh, I always like to use the microplane on that. So we'll get the microplane and we'll get the, we'll get the zest in there. Gives it a nice lime flavor. We use, we're gonna use two limes. And then, as soon as you start zesting this, this is when it starts to really smell good. And Christine asked me earlier on Facebook, she had mentioned possibly uh, zesting in some ginger into this one. And absolutely, you could, uh, you could put some ginger in here. That would be nice. Although we're gonna put chilies, so that kind of gives it a bit of a bite. Um, but uh, ginger would be another way to get a bit of a uh, bit of uh, bite on there for um, uh, instead of the instead of the chilies. So so that, and then we'll cut the cut the limes in half. Oh, there we go, Andel. Welcome, welcome back. And you've made the salad. So it's, yeah, it's it is a popular. Definitely a popular salad. Not necessarily popular in Canada, but in other countries for sure. So squeeze a lime. And just toss the whole lime thing right in there. We'll get them, we'll pick them out later. So we want the, all the juice of two, whoops, two limes. And limes don't have seeds, so you don't have to worry about straining them out. And it does, it does smell uh, meant to be arvine. Good, uh, yeah. It starts to really smell good when you get the when you get the uh, start chopped up the cilantro and the, and get the lime squeezed in there for sure. All right, so we've got those. Get all the juice out as much as we can. And we're gonna add about a tablespoon of of uh, this is just uh, this is like liquid. You can see it here, just a liquid honey. Um, I find the liquid stuff works a bit better for salads when you're mixing. We want about a tablespoon in a bit. You just judge it. If you like it sweeter, if you like it sweeter, then by all means add uh, add more. So we're just going to mix this up. 
Now you, you could also add if you if you wanted to uh, for vegetables in here. You could you could slice some thin same same cut up the same way some some tomatoes to give it some nice red. Um, I don't have any whole tomatoes. I used them up the other day and I didn't get any more at the store. Um, but you could also put red pepper in here as well. Would we'll give it a nice uh, definitely give it a nice color. But uh, we're gonna leave it quite simple. And some chili flakes. Again, this is, uh, you want to, you, you typically want to have something for a bit of bite. It gives it a nice, nice taste with the, with the mango and the chili. So there is the yakama and mango, green mango salad. So let's let this sit for about, ideally you want to let it sit for about 15 minutes or so. So it's going to give us enough time to cook our salmon. I'm just going to put this into the fridge and uh, let it sit and it will be ready to eat when we are when we are ready there we go so if anybody has any if anybody has any questions let me know um what's everybody having i have water here today so i don't know what everybody else has in their cups let's get this in the fridge and we'll get the salmon going So this recipe is mostly, I remember Susan keeps asking me going, why don't you, eat, you don't eat enough salads. You don't have enough salads. So it's, uh, it's one of those. This is kind of something different. It's really tasty. Good summer salad. It goes with basically any, I mean, any kind of, if you want to have a protein on there, you could have fish, you could have prawns, you could have chicken, you could have pork, like anything you want. If you want to, if you want to spruce it up with more vegetables, it would be nice like I said, with some peppers, you could put uh, you could put some corn in the mix. That would be nice. Maybe some grilled corn on top would be good as well. Um, kind of sky's the sky's the limit. Get add some cucumbers in there, and uh, and go from there. And wh why do I drink? That's a <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. I just we have more mugs than I guess than glasses. Other than other than wine wine glasses, so I just have it out of the mug. What I really do is I'll just use one cup all day kind of thing and uh, have coffee in the morning and then wash it out and then just have it with water. I don't know. And yeah, good Susan. Yeah, give it a try. You'll, I think you'll like it. I think everybody will kind of like it. So let's get the salmon. We'll get the salmon on the go here. Let me just clear off my space because the salmon won't take long in the oven. Let's see if we can, can fit it here. Oh, pure coconut vodka soda can. That sounds interesting. The coconut would go good with uh, the salad. That's for sure. <laughs> and uh, here, we'll do the salmon on. We'll do the salmon on here. Yeah, good Fourth of July salad. Or for Canadians here, we could do it on July uh, July first. Yeah, it's definitely a good summer salad. That is for sure. Nice and fresh tasting, crispy. Crispy. Oh, Alpine Alpine Gulch is back. Welcome. All right, let's get this out of the oven. So I've got the oven preheated and the pan. Let's get this going. And 400. And we're gonna be cooking. We got a couple pieces of just a couple small pieces of uh, this is some sockeye salmon that was in the freezer. So wild salmon. So summer drink. Christine always has the drinks going. Yeah, I think it's Dean that makes. I don't know where Dean. I don't think he's on on yet today, but I think it's Dean that always uh, is making the making the drinks. So salmon here. We're gonna keep the salmon pretty plain. We did the honey glazed salmon before, but because the salad has a lot of flavor, we're just gonna keep this keep this one super super simple. Just a touch of olive oil on there, and uh, some some cracked pepper. Super super simple. So this one still has the skin on. We'll take that off after. Skin side down first. If there's skin on the on the salmon, 
because it's going to get nice and crispy in the clean, in the pan, in the clean pan. So we'll let that sear off on both sides. My hand to wash. And we don't need the cutting board anymore, so we can get rid of that. So another, another simple, another simple, simple, easy dinner. Few, few minutes on each side. We'll, we're going to sear, we're going to sear off, sear off the, the fish both sides. Then we'll finish in the oven. So a couple minutes on both sides. You'll see it here. It'll. It'll get a nice uh, kind of crisp to it. You can see it browned a little bit. That's what we want. And uh, yeah, we've stepped away from the Instant Pot, I think, Christine, because it is, uh, it is um, summertime. More summer dishes right now. So, salmon is seared off. Let's. Uh, we're just going to finish that. You can. You can kind of see the brown sizzle there, right on the top. Not on the top. We're going to finish that in the oven. Because then we can kind of forget about it. There we go. And uh, so no, yeah, no. We haven't had instant pot for a while. Um, I used it the other night to make uh, some a little rice dish with some stuff, but um, we'll do it. We'll do another one. We'll we'll figure some stuff out for summer for sure. And uh, for sure, for Cheryl, so it is your first time here. Yeah, I used to, I used to be a long time ago, uh, going on uh, like over ten years ago. Now I was I worked at a hotel, a hotel rest uh, Fairmont Hotels for about. I was in hotel as a chef for about close to twenty. I guess twenty going to date myself here 15 20 years I guess quite a while so I was trained yes I was trained as, as a chef I did my apprenticeship as a chef and then decided to switch careers and but now I do it as a hobby on YouTube I guess would be the best way to describe it as sharing uh, recipes with friends and and people that find me yeah so if you have any questions by all means I'll, I'll do my best to answer them Cheryl Oh, good question. So Susan bought a new frying pan, really likes it. The price was $100 originally, but who knows, on sale, $30. Oh, find the lid for the right size. Hmm. I mean, you could try whatever brand it is, Susan. Try the, try the, maybe try the website that's on. And, and then what, um, what Christine said, try Maybe Amazon might have them. Sometimes it's hard to find mismatched stuff like that, though, especially when they're getting rid of stuff on sale with pans. And finding the right size lid, yeah. Um, you might have to find one that's just a little bit bigger maybe and just kind of make it work, you know. But I, it's hard to, um, it's, if you, it's like when you buy the set, you have the set. If you, if you lose one of them or one of them breaks, it's hard to find that one piece. But Amazon might have them. But I don't know if you can buy the lid. That's the thing. You might have to buy the whole, the whole piece. That's the problem. That's the problem. Um, oh, and Dean likes yeah, crispy the crispy uh, crispy salmon skin. Yeah, some people some people like it. Right, it's been scaled, so you can you can eat it. I usually pick I usually just kind of pick it off, but it leaves it's it's good for the flavor when you're cooking it to leave it on there, even if you do take it off. But if it gets nice and crispy, a lot of people will eat, will actually eat that. Yeah. So this was an easy one, as you can see. Like there's like no no sweat no sweat for this one. Um, oh, there. Good tip, Cheryl. IKEA, they have universals. There you go. Thanks. There you go, Susan. Give uh, give I uh, IKEA. Yeah, yeah. Good, good tips, everybody. I would never. I would have never thought of that. We went to IKEA to look for uh, a patio chair, and then silly, didn't not realizing all the lineups because everybody has to go to IKEA. 
after the stores open. So we basically got to the parking lot, saw the line, <laughs> saw the line. I said, "No, I don't need, don't need to get a chair from IKEA," and that was it. Um, oh, there we go. So IKEA, there you go, Susan. IKEA. So let us know if it uh, if it works. Let's get the uh, let's get the plate the plates ready. This is a this is a quick one. We've only been half an hour. My noisy noisy plates. This has only been a this has only been a half an hour half an hour dinner. And we're already done. This would, this would be per, this would be the perfect dinner for when you have get when you have, if you're having friends or family over guests over in the summer and you want to cook something make something like this because you can make the salad ahead of time make it make it in the afternoon people come over salads in the fridge just waiting and then all you literally have to do is if you want to have it with salmon or chicken or something like that is is cook that this would be really good if you had the barbecue going some nice little thin pieces of salmon um, if you wanted more veggies do some grilled vegetables on top too uh, grilled grilled peppers the grilled corn would be really good a little bit of grilled corn with some uh, brushed with olive oil and uh, a little bit of maybe a squeeze of lime on the corn is always t is always tasty and then some you know some like chipotle pepper or even some more some a little bit of chili cayenne pepper on the corn give it a bit of bite would be nice on there um, yeah, sky's the, sky's the limit with this one. It's pretty. It's a pretty basic salad, but it's but it's really tasty. So you could have it with the served with the with the salad, and um, and just some, maybe some extra vegetables too on the side if you wanted to grill. Some, if you're on, if you have the barbecue going, grilled asparagus with some peppers and uh, makes a nice. Uh, so have the salad as a bit more of a side with some some grilled vegetables and then whatever protein you want to have or extra veggies. We're gonna have this one mainly as a salad. So lots of salad, little piece of fish. Yeah. So if anybody does try this, make sure that you give me a message and let me know how you like it. Let's just give this a check. I can hear it's I can hear the salmon sizzling. And it's almost uh, it's almost ready. Salmon doesn't take doesn't take long. Once you see once you sear it off in a really hot pan, the thin pieces, they really don't take take that long. So before we plate my dinner, what's everybody having plans for dinner tonight? Let me know in the comments. And thanks everybody for hitting the thumbs up. We've got um, we've got uh, fourteen people have popped in at one point or another, so that's always appreciated. That's pretty awesome. And everybody's we've had fourteen people hit the hit the thumbs button, which is appreciated. So let me know what you're going to make. Ah, and Susan has a uh, yeah. The padernos are nice. I have. Um, those are what, those are what um, here, Susan. Those are those are like the ones that uh, that I have, the set. If you can read that, yeah. I had to get a new. Well, I I was overdue for a set a new set of pans because they inevitably they like they inevitably they break or you lose one, you lose the lid, the handle breaks. They get the bottoms, you know the the the, the bottoms eventually will will. Even if they're you know decent decent quality, the bottoms will sometimes come up. They don't last forever as you use them. But I got a really good deal on those too as well, Susan. The Padernos they're on sale. You can always find pots on sale. Don't ever pay full price for for a pot. That's for sure. And uh, so Cheryl's having keto chicken nuggets and toasted cabbage. I'll have to check some keto stuff. I'm sure some of the recipes that I've made on on this channel, Cheryl, you might want to check out on on my. We've been doing this live for. This is like number fifty something. We've we've been doing live three days a week for the last three months, so there's tons of videos. You might find some keto ones in there. I don't know, not 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 specifically keto, but there might be some you can find, or might be able to adjust a little bit to be keto. Well, that sounds really good, Christine, as well. Watermelon and basil salad with with chicken. So what's you have to let me know what's an, what's an island chicken? That's interesting. But watermelon and basil is really good. That would also be good. Watermelon, basil, a little bit. Make, did you make a drizzle of like the um, balsamic vinaigrette reduction? That would be really awesome on there with with the watermelon. Nice, tasty summer salad. Yeah. And Stormin. So Norman's making loco moco during a. F so if anybody's still wanting to watch food be cooked after my stream, Norman, check out check out Stormin's um, 
channel. He does a live food stream on Mondays as well, and he does some neat recipes. So check his out, because he's doing, I'll check that out later, Norman, cool. And Nadia's ordering Indian food, that's okay. Indian food is really good. Really good, and you've got like butter, butter chicken, dal, lots of good vegetarian food. I could eat, I could eat aloo gobi and uh, uh, garlic naan bread every day of the week. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so you'd have the salad with veg. Now you have vegetarian. So Undal, what do you have on the salad now? What are you? What do you as a vegetarian instead of salmon? What would you put on? What's a good? What's a good? Uh, like protein, like something that you would put on the salad. To, for a vegetarian, because I know we have some vegetarians watching as well. And tomato, tomato. <laughs> and Alpine's having a big falafel with tzatziki, and uh, that sounds good as well. Tzatziki. I haven't made tzatziki in a long time. I should do a tzatziki. Some, ah, yeah, good idea. Good idea. Okay, let's get this out because this is uh, this is ready. You can tell. Oh yeah, here. That's uh, so you can you can probably hear the salmon on my microphone sizzling. So it is uh, it is done. If you're using cast iron, make sure you always use your use your uh, oven mitt or towel because um, the handle gets hot. And Nadia having butter chicken with non bread. I love the non bread. I could just eat non bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's get this on a on a plate so we can eat. Let's mix. So give this one more one more mix up here to get all the uh, all the ingredients mixed in. There we go. So again, tomatoes you could put in here, but we're gonna keep it simple. It smells really good. Now that the, the flavors have had a bit of time to kind of absorb to everything. And you'll see as it sits a little bit, the, the, it'll, some, of the, some of the liquid's gonna draw out of the, out of the yakima stuff. It gets a bit, it'll get a bit softer. It's not as like, not as like, um, I guess what the word, not starchy, but not as crisp, crunchy as before. And basil, basil, basil or basil. <laughs> That's too funny. So simple one on a plate. Couldn't be more. This dish could not be, could not be more simple. But tasty and it, I can, you can really you can really smell the fresh, like the fresh, all the lime and the onion and the mango. Everything smells, everything smells fresh. We'll turn the oven off. And we'll get the, uh, we'll get the salmon over. There we go. It always looks so small on this camera because it's such a wide angle wide angle lens, but, uh, but there we go. So we're having the, uh, the basil, the basil and uh, basil debate. It's too funny. So let's give this, let's give this, I'll give you a close up so you can kind of see it. Hopefully let's just try and go back to the other camera. Maybe it shows better. There we go. So, um, yikama mango salad with cilantro and lime. Another good vegetable just actually would be nice in here too is if you had some avocado, you could slice some avocado on there in the last in the last minute. It would be nice to have it on there as well. So lots of options for this one. This is kind of the, this is kind of the base of this you know of this recipe or salad, and you can um, you can spice it up and add add what you like. There's no no wrong no wrong ingredients. So let's give this a try. If anybody has any last minute questions, by all means, let me know. But uh, that was that was fast. So that's like start to finish. That was um, forty five minutes. So pretty pretty good. The mandolin helps absolutely. 
Let's give this a try. You might need a little bit more, a bit more spice on it, but we can always add that later. Hmm. Good salad. Perfect layer it is. It all has a nice crunch, a nice crunch to it. So let's try at least a little bit of salmon. Nothing, nothing fancy with the salmon. It's just to sear it up. But uh, a nice light, a nice light summer dinner. With, with that salad, if you want to, um, if you don't have the mangoes, you could also add, like I said, some chopped like cucumbers. It would also be good with beets if you had some uh, beets to use up. Uh, the beets you would probably want to cook cook ahead of time if you're going to be cutting them, unless you're going to be cutting them very thin. But uh, I would cook the beets ahead of time, and then you could do it as a into nice cubes mixed in there as well. And you could also cut the yakama into, into cubes, which would make it a nice nice salad as well. Um, and Christine, you have watermelon. You could even put watermelon in there too. Why not? And um, so there we go. Uh, Nadia avocado, yes, good question. And a question from Norman: Would it be better chilled? I like it. I think for the salad, it would be better kind of coming out of the fridge, put on top, nice because it's nice crispy. So you definitely want to have it kind of cold, um, cold, uh, colder on the colder side. But if you're if you're having it, uh, if you're bringing it, like if you're having a barbecue or something like that, then it's maybe like a pot, more potluck style. By all means, you could put it into a bowl and have it out for a bit. There's no, there's no. Um, like mayonnaise base or anything there. So outside in the heat, it's gonna sit for a little bit, it's okay. And if, yeah, there you go. So if you don't like mango, you can put some cucumber in there. Yeah. So hopefully everybody enjoyed that. I'm gonna have another pie. I, I love like the green, the green mango. It's got a nice like tart, tart taste to it. Definitely really good. So there you go. So if you're ever, if you're ever at the store and you see a, now you know what you can make with a yakama, because, and if you have guests over, you can tell them it's yakama and something different that they probably never had before. And a great way to use up when you have those, when you see those mangoes that are on sale in the boxes, cause I got a lot of these now and they're never ripe when you buy them, you can use the green mangoes for the salad. So there we go. So thanks for tuning, tuning in everybody. This was fun. This is a good one. This is, it's, this is, these are kind of the fun little dishes to cook that don't take too long and kind of share some new, new kind of stuff and some things I haven't eaten in a long time either. So it's kind of, kind of fun to find these these ingredients so uh thanks to the, all the new people that came that was definitely appreciated it's always neat, neat to see new people we're going to be back live again on wednesday it's already scheduled we've got uh we've got some potato gnocchi that we're going to do and i've uh, my friend pam she dropped off some fresh basil basil today and we're going to make a fresh pesto with that so if, you, if you're not subscribed to the channel subscribe come back and tune in on on uh wednesday same time I'm going to go eat now. Everybody have a good rest of the week and we'll see you on Wednesday again. Thanks for hitting the thumbs up. Thanks for subscribing. If you could share this video to one friend that you think would find this recipe useful and enjoy it, that's always appreciated. And until next time, thanks everybody. And we will see you on the next live stream. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Bye.